I'm with uh, Will Perrin at the Talk About Local conference, which is buzzing around us. Will, this is uh, three years on, I think, from the first uh, one, and you'll venture into this field. What changes have you noticed? Uh, well, it's lovely that we're seeing people we first met in 2009 in a grimy foyer of a university in Stoke-on-Trent have now kind of got lovely flourishing sites. They're very confident in what they're doing. Uh, they're building local alliances and partnerships, and we're seeing them, we're seeing them grow over the years. Um, and we've seen, we see new people coming in. There are people here today who are wanting to set up a local site. They don't really know how it works. But the fascinating thing for me is that we're starting to see uh, a real professional interest in, in what these fantastic uh, hyperlocal amateurs in the great British tradition are doing on the ground. So today here we've got the BBC, we've got Nesta, we've got um, the Technology Strategy Board, so two big funding arms of governments. We've got, I think, four universities and four separate research projects are represented here from the UK and overseas researching what um, hyperlocal media is doing in the UK. I think it's fantastic. So is uh, um, talk about local, hyperlocal sites becoming more professional, more business-like? Are they retaining their slightly home-knitted and amateur status? <laughs> um, I love the home-knitted amateur status. I think it's fantastic. And I always make this analogy between um, uh, Battenberg cake, which is a kind of uh, a, a, a commercial catering miracle, producing hundreds of miles of Battenberg cake and selling it in perfect condition in shops all over the country. Um, but it's great, and it serves a certain need. But people generally prefer cake their mum's made, um, or home-baked stuff. And a lot of the hyperlocal um, output is home-baked, but some of it is increasingly professional. Um, but I hope we find a middle ground between the Battenberg um, ersatzness sometimes of traditional commercial media um, and, and the home-bakedness of, um, of uh, hyperlocal sites. That's, that's the happy middle ground I'm seeking to find. So you've got some connect connections up to academics, to agencies, to funders, BBC... How about the communications into the media, into the community? Are those as strong as ever? Uh, yes, because the sites work really well when they come out of a particular community rather than parachuting something in. Um, and in many ways, starting with an amateur product that is, it doesn't have any funding revenues gives you the freedom to develop a better community product. You don't have to be quite as hard-edged, cynical and commercial as you might otherwise be. And so the connections to the community are very firmly still there. And so um, what's the new strands of development to talk about local? Well, we uh, started out with um, a grant funding from Channel 4 and Screen West Midlands and Advantage West Midlands to train all over the country. We did a lot of that for a couple of years, which is fantastic. And now we are paying our own way, earning money from consultancy and supporting people who want to understand hyperlocal media, and in some cases some grant funding. So today we announced um, a fantastic partnership with Nominet Trust and Nesta to uh, develop uh, geocoding and augmented reality-based um, hyperlocal products, which is real future-leading stuff. It's like Blade Runner. It's absolutely fantastic. And we're doing that with very generous grant funding. Um, and initially, hyperlocal started around blog sites and so forth. I'm also particularly interested in how individuals work as community reporters, social reporters, hyperlocalists, network weavers or whatever. Are you seeing them joining the clan? That's a fabulous bundle of labels there, that, that really is. Um, and I think you could almost mix and match any of the nouns or adjectives you've used there. And they will s and allow people to self-describe. Um, people do this stuff for a variety of complex personal motivations. And, um, we, and I think the interesting thing that we'll see with the academics is that they all want to develop a taxonomy um, of um, both the websites themselves and the types of people that, that get engaged with them. And I think we'd all benefit from that. But as ever, you can't put everybody into a nice, neat box. So how can people describe themselves? I agree, it's re I find it really difficult, and everybody has their own little brand. What do you say when they ask you what you do? I find it really difficult. I say, um, in King's Cross, um, I say I'm a, when I, where I run my own site, I say I'm a community activist, even though it took me years to accept even that quite benign label. I've, uh, all I would say was, look, I'm a person. I live here, I care about this place, um, and I want to make it better. And in order to make places better, you need to communicate. And it's just that in 2012, the web is probably the best way of communicating. It doesn't substitute, it's not as good as face-to-face, -face, but in a busy modern world, you can't afford to do face-to-face, -face, either kind of emotionally, socially, or financially.